He was a military man, a partisan leader, a hero of the resistance, a communist, and a dictator. This is Stefan from History Hustle, and I'm standing in Belgrade, Serbia, and in this video, I'm going to talk about Joseph Broz Tito. Joseph Broz was born in a village called Komorovic. Apologize if I pronounced it incorrectly in present day Croatia back in the day, part of Austria Hungary. In 1913, he joined the Austrian Hungarian military. Therefore, he took part in the invasion of Serbia in 1914, the beginning of the First World War. Later, he was transferred to the Russian front where he was wounded and captured and while being there in Russia into custody he witnessed the Russian Revolution of 1917. In 1920 he returned to his motherland which was now the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. There he became a member of the Forbidden Communist Party. For that he spent five years in jail. Later he returned to Russia which was now the Soviet Union and came back to Yugoslavia to help recruit people to fight in the Spanish Civil War, which was a civil war of communists versus non-communists. Now, at the end of the 30s, he was lucky that he was not in the Soviet Union, and therefore he escaped Stalin's purchase. During the Second World War, Tito led an army of partisans to fight a guerrilla warfare against the Nazis. This army became bigger, 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 and bigger, and eventually, they proclaimed victory over the Nazis with a little help of the Soviet Union. Yugoslavia became a communist nation and in the first years Tito was seen as a loyal fellow of Stalin. But this changed in 1948 because then Tito broke with Stalin. And this was because of disagreement the two dictators had with each other. Now see Stalin wanted that Yugoslavia became a provider of minerals for the Soviet Union. Tito wanted to industrialize his country. The main disagreement that could be found was that Stalin had a blueprint that should be applied on each country that became communist. However, Tito here, he thought that you should look at each country individually and think which communist principles you should apply on that country. And that ID, that ideology became known as Titoism. Now, Stalin here sent that several agents from Moscow to assassinate Tito and this all failed and Tito replied to Stalin Stalin stop sending these agents we already caught five of them and if you continue to do so I'll send one of my agents and trust me I do not have to send a second now Stalin could have invaded Yugoslavia because the other Eastern Bloc countries were aligned in the Warsaw Pact what Yugoslavia was a part of. However, Stalin did not. Yugoslavia went what was called the Third Way. It was a communist country, but it was not aligned with the East, nor it was aligned with the West. Tito founded the movement of non-aligned nations, which was a movement of mostly countries that just became independent from their colonial masters. Then they had their first conference in Bandung, on the island of Java, in Indonesia. However, Tito was not choosing a side. He sometimes severely criticized the Soviet Union, especially after the events of, for example, the Hungarian uprising and the Prague Spring. In the 70s, the ethnic diversity of Yugoslavia became more and more visible. Until now, Tito had always suppressed these nationalist sentiments by his slogan, Brotherhood and Unity. But this could not last forever. And on the 4th of May, 1980, Joseph Bros. Tito passed away. So was Tito a good guy or a bad guy? A hero or a villain? Well, as always, the answer lies in the middle. So I'm going to look at some events that can maybe shed some light on this and you can form your own opinion about it. All right, so Tito here, he was part of the Austro-Hungarian army that invaded Serbia. And that army committed some severe atrocities against the Serbian population in 1914. Now, Tito's regiment, however, was not involved in these atrocities. So let's take a look at the Second World War. We had like the Partisan Army, the Yugoslav Liberation Army, 
And also they became known for some severe atrocities, most infamously known, the Bleiberg Massacre. In short, Croatia was a puppet government of the Nazis. The Croatian army fled to Austria to avoid capture of the partisans. They wanted to surrender to the British there, however the British refused, sent them back and they were slaughtered by the partisans. Joseph Rostito sent a telegram to these Slovene partisans that were responsible for these killings that they should not kill prisoners of war. So therefore you could say he was not supporting these massacres. However, a partisan army is never as good organized as a professional army. So more often than not, you can say that individual commanders act on their own in committing these atrocities. Then there was Goli Otok. Goli Otok was basically a big concentration camp where dissidents or alleged dissidents of the Tito regime were put in. Tens of thousands of people have been imprisoned there and hundreds have died there. So we can talk here about some severe oppression because that's what Tito also did, do not forget. He wanted to keep the unity, brotherhood and unity within Yugoslavia. However, therefore, every nationalistic sentiment had to be eliminated. So a lot of people ended up in jail. However, on the flip side, it kept Yugoslavia together and it's kind of like the way we look at it now, known as with these horrible wars that occurred afterwards. Tito here did not choose a side during the Cold War and he even founded the movement of non-aligned nations. So therefore, he wanted to choose a middle way. He just wanted, did not be involved in any sort of conflicts. He visited countless leaders of countless foreign nations and therefore, you can say, he was quite diplomatic. Tito can be seen as a benevolent dictator. It's a dictator that basically does not act out of selfish principles or ideologic principles. Take for example Hitler, Stalin and wants to suppress as many people as possible. His main goal was to keep peace and keep Yugoslavia as a federation together. And he succeeded in that. However, after his death, it all fell apart in a series of conflicts that became known as the Yugoslav Wars. And that is a very long story, a very complicated story, and a very tragic story, and a story for another time. For now I say thank you for watching, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.